Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Chapter 8, Momentum, Impulse, and Collisions, Video 4. Today's topic is elastic collisions. The objective are to understand in one-dimensional elastic collisions, the relative velocity before the collision and the relative velocity after the collision have the same magnitude and opposite direction. And to be able to apply conservation of kinetic energy and the conservation of momentum to solve elastic collision problems. An elastic collision in an isolated system is one in which kinetic energy as well as momentum is conserved. So there are two equations, uh, conservation of kinetic energy and the conservation of momentum. Elastic collision only happens when the forces between the colliding bodies are conservative, such as gravity between the two objects or the um, force of springs between the two objects. So in this equation, one represent before, two represent after the subscript. Elastic collision, one body initially at rest. This is a special case. If one body is uh, initially at rest, say uh, object B is at rest. So this is conservation of kinetic energy. This is conservation of a momentum. When you combine the two, this are the equation you should be able to derive of velocity after the collision for the uh, object A and object B. Let's take a look at an example, special case, a ping pong ball colliding with a bowling ball. So bowling ball was at rest, ping pong ball was moving. Let's take a look. So because bowling ball has so much more mass than the ping pong ball, so VA2x is almost equals to negative VA1x, almost bouncing back with the same velocity. So suppose you're going there with five meters, Per second when you're coming back it will be very very close to five meters per second it's just a little bit less in the opposite direction because this top is almost negative mb the bottom is almost positive mb so this is almost negative one just slightly smaller than negative one so it's bounced back almost the same on the other hand the bowling ball's speed is very very small because MA is so much big, uh, smaller than MB, so this proportion is a very small number. However, it's supposed to move just a little bit. Another case, what if a ping pong ball was at rest, the bowling ball was moving. In this case, MA is so much bigger than MB. So MA minus MB divided by MA plus MB is almost a positive one. So that means the bowling ball speed is almost the same, just slightly smaller than before. How about the ping pong ball? Ping pong ball, well, MA is so much bigger. So MA, 2MA divided by MA is almost two, almost two times original. So the ping pong ball speed is almost two times of bowling ball speed before the collision. Another special case, what if A and B have the same mass? If they have the same mass, MA minus MB equals to zero. So that means A, after collision, the velocity of A becomes zero. Then velocity of B, MA, MB equals to MA. So this becomes one. So velocity of B is the same as velocity of A, velocity of A before collision. So what happens if MA equals to MB, then uh, velocity of A after collision is zero. B has the same velocity as the velocity uh, A. That is, the body was moving stops dead. It gives always momentum and kinetic energy to the body that was at rest. Elastic collision and relative velocity. So in a straight line elastic collision, the two of two bodies, the relative velocity before and after collision have the same magnitude, but opposite sign. So this is after, this is before. You just put a negative, that's opposite sign. Let's take a look at our example from before, a ping pong ball and a bowling ball. So this is before, suppose this is five, and after this one would be almost equals to five coming back, and bowling ball is moving at a very, very small velocity. So relative velocity before is five relative to B. If you are in the point B, A is moving to the right to be now again after a is moving to the left almost it's exactly at five so 4.999 plus 0 0.001 equals to five so after is the same now if the bowling ball is striking a ping pong ball suppose bowling ball is three after the bowling ball's velocity will be 
almost the same. And here would be ping pong ball's velocity. So the relative velocity is still three relative to the ping pong ball going to the right. Again, if you have two objects have the same mass, before it's 10, after A is moving to with 10 meters going to the left relative to B. So relative velocity is the same, but in the opposite direction. Let's take a look at this example for the air track example from the previous example we had before. Now we add ideal spring, so collision is elastic. So here is the mass and the uh, original velocity. What is the after velocity? We use conservation of momentum and a relative velocity instead of uh, conservation of kinetic energy because conservation of kinetic energy has squared, V squared, and make it more uh, complicated. So if for one dimensional elastic kinetic energy, relative velocity is the same but opposite. We can use these two equations, substitute the numbers, and you can solve it. Okay, so VAX is negative one, VBX is positive three. So you see the relative velocity is the same as before. So before was the relative velocity is for, relative to B, A is moving with four, right? After A is moving with negative four. So it's negative one minus three, so negative four. Before and after are the same magnitude opposite direction. So what happened during this collision? So when both gliders are moving before collision, the more massive object moves slower after collision, hence lose kinetic energy. The less massive object will move faster after collision, hence gains kinetic energy. The total kinetic energy of the system is conserved. Let's take a look at another example. The fission of uranium nuclei in a nuclear reactor produce high-speed neutrons. So before a neutron can trigger additional fissions, it has to be slowed down by collisions with the nuclei in the moderator of the reactor. Suppose a neutron, which mass is 1U, traveling at a speed 2.6 times 10 to the 7 meters per second, undergoes head-on collision with a carbon nu nucleus. The carbon is 12U, has that mass 12U initially at rest. The external force during collision are negligible. What are the velocities after collision? So you can use U or you can use kilograms. I suggest you use U because in the momentum, this mass have the same unit. So it doesn't matter you use U or kilograms. I will just use U. And here is the relative velocity equation. Substitute everything in two equations with two variables. You can solve for V. Um, for neutron is negative 2.26 times 10 to the 7 meters per second, and for the carbon is 0.4 times 10 to the 7 meter per second. So let's take a look at the equation, what the equation means. So neutron actually end up with 11 over 13 of its initial speed. So you can use 2.26 divided by 2.6, you have 11 over 13. This is a factor of the mass difference. You use the mass difference, neutron is 1 minus 12, you have negative 11. Neutron plus the mass of the carbon is 13, so you have negative 11 of 13. Negative means going backwards. What is the speed of carbon? Is 2 times the mass of the neutron divided by 13. So 2 times 1 divided by 1 plus 12. So 2 thirteenth. That's the speed of the carbon. Kinetic energy is proportional to the speed squared. Oh, this one should be speed. So the neutron's kinet a final energy is 11 over 13 squared, or about 0.72 of its original value. So you have to collide a few times, eventually reduce its speed, it's slow enough to uh, go into the triggered vision. Okay, let's take a look at another example of two-dimensional elastic collision. So this figure shows an elastic collision of two pucks in a frictionless air hockey table. Find the final speed VB2 of puck B and angle alpha and beta in the figure. So initial, you know, one puck's mass and other puck's mass, you know, one puck's initial velocity, and you know the um, puck A's final velocity after collision is two meters per second. So what is the velocity of puck B? So in this case, 
we cannot, one thing you need to remember, we cannot use relative velocity equation. That is not valid in two dimensions. So let's use conservation of uh, kinetic energy to solve velocity of a B2. So this is uh, straightforward. We know everything else except the velocity of B2. Now, let's see, use conservation momentum to find angle. Conservation momentum is P1, momentum before equals to momentum after. This is a vector addition. So let's draw a picture. Here is PA2, here is PB2, and here is P1, right? So we get, as you can see, this is a triangle. So we can use the trig to solve these questions. We know P, P1 is 2, it's 0.5 times 4. We know PA2 is 1, is 2 uh, times 0.5 times 2. And we know PB2 is 1.342, that's 0.3 times 4.472. So we know the three sides of triangles. Now we just have to find the angle. So there are a couple ways to do it. You can use law of cosine, PB2 squared equals to PA2 squared plus P1 squared minus two, P, 2 times PA2 times P1 times cosine alpha. This is the alpha. So the only thing you don't know is alpha. So you can solve alpha is about 36.9 degrees. You can use the same law of sine to find beta, or you can use the law of, I mean, you can use the law of cosine to find beta, or you can use the law of sine to find beta. So opposite side over sine alpha equals PA2 over sine beta, you get beta equals 26.6 degrees. Okay. Let's take a look at a test your understanding. So most of present day nuclear reactor use water as a moderator instead of carbon. Our water molecules mass is 18U, a better or worse moderator than carbon atom. So we use water. The advantage of water is that it also acts as a coolant for the reactor's radioactive core. Okay, so let's go back to the question with carbon. So after collision the neutron, uh, of neutron with carbon, the neutron ended up with 11 of 13 of its initial speed. How did we use 11, get 11 of 13? We used the difference of mass divided by the, the sum of the mass. And the speed of carbon is the two times of neutron's mass over sum of the mass. Now let's use the same relationship for water. So for water, the neutron will end up with the difference of mass is 17. The sum of mass is 19 of its initial speed. And the recalling water's molecule would be 2 over 19 of neutron's initial speed. So 17 over 19 is greater than 11 over 13. This result means that the neutron will take longer to slow down. So the water molecule is actually a worse moderator, but because it's cheaper and it can cool the uh, core, that's why we use water. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.